Welkom bij nog een episode van Wat met mij Willem Wels en een gezelsprogrammetje wat ik al vir jou gebou het uit my garage hele paar keer van die verlede. <laughs> um, if you are an English speaking person and you yet to listen to the interview with uh, Sunny Fox, I would suggest that you fast forward for about 5 to 10 minutes because I'm going to speak in Afrikaans to my regular listeners now. So fast forward now. Anyway, hoe gaan het? Wat sê jylle? Huh? Wat maak jy? Is jy best om te bestuur? Sit jy by die werk? Hou jy naweek is jy af? Is jy werkloos? Het jy werk, maar jy mou na oor? Wit brood onder die arm? Maak jy saak wat jy doen nie? Ek is bly jy het geklik om te luister vandag, want ek het vir jou baie cool story. Jy weet, nie een story nie, maar soos een gesprek. Ek het vir jou a, a jam-packed episode met Sunny Fox. Onthou jy vir Sunny Fox. Sy is een ongelooflike singer-songwriter, baie goeie gitaarspeler, baie goeie sanger, sangeres, jy weet, female weergabe van sanger. <laughs> en uh, sy is... Uh, Sy kom keier uit die pad van Londen af, en sy het laas jaar getrek van uh, Kaapstad af Londen toe. En dit was kort na dat sy haar, haar album uitgebring het, en dit is haar tweede selle album. En die album sy naam is My Soul Got Stranger. En die album voor dit, wat in 2015 uitgekom het, sy naam is Serpente Machine. Nou, Serpente, denk ek, is Serpent in Portugies, en Machine is Afrikaans. Jy weet, so, daar so so album ook uit van haar, en die van julle weet, jy weet wie Sunny Fox is nie, want daar hier die band Machinery. Want hy van machinery, nou, uh, ons praat oor machinery ook vandag, maar voor ons uh, met Sunny Fox gesels, wat al die pad van Londen af kom keir het, sien mens kom keir van Europe af dees daar, om op die podcast te wees. Ek meen, Dion Maas het van Berlijn af kom keir, uh, laatst weeks episode, en hier toe sien van Sunny Fox, wat kom keir van Londen af, so, uh, hier is a traveling show dees daar. Even ek was een bykie weg geweest onlangs. Nou, ek weet ek het laatst week op die intro en die volle af vir jou afgerammel, wat alles gebeur het, <laughs> tussen december 2018 en maart maand 2019 toe ek geninja bom het, maar ek was uh, vir 10 dae in Shanghai in China, en ek was een paar dae in Beijing gewees, en ek het die Great Wall of China gaan besoek. Of soos Carl Pilkington gesê het op sy show, The Ide de Brood, hy het genoem The OK Wall of China. <laughs> het was meer soos The Great Fire Wall of China, want as jy daar in die hotel bly, of nie daar is in die land, dan mag jy nie Facebook nie, en jy mag nie um, WhatsApp of Twitter of uh, Google of Gmail nie, hulle sit een firewall daarop en jy mag ook jy VPN gebruik nie alhoewel ek een VPN gebruik het het, uh, dan blok laai VPN he. hulle is voorkien, ek al sit geek ouwe so achter die reek naar Ivers weet, in die uh, communist light boardroom weet, banker <laughs> achter een laptop, besig om my VPN te blok, dit was a bio weird experience, um, ek was in China man Ek wens ek in jou alles vertel daar oor, maar jy, jy het ingetune vandag om te luister na my gesprek met Sunny Fox. Um, maar wacht, laat een paar mense, dit wil ek weg vast brieven gestuur. Ek moet sikkie een of twee van hulle lees. Wat, wat sê jy nou hier so? Podcastbriefie van Wanner van Staden. Hy sê, beste Willem, ek luister graag jou podcast, wil ek op kantoor sit en werk. En wens dat ek liever kan sit en song skryf of bijspeel. Fantastische werk wat jy doen. Ek skrop maar so rond tussen die podcast en luister nou na jou gesprek met Rian Nieuwenhuis. Ek glo dat jy dit seker al sterk oorweeg het en vergewe my asjeblief as jy al hiervan gepraat het en ek dalk nie weet hiervan nie, maar in geval jy dit nog nooit oorweeg het nie, jy sit hier met materiaal vir een boek oor die geskiernis van die Stellenbosch Music Boom. Come on, do it, ek sal een koop. Vriendelike groete, Wanner van Staden. Wanner, ek het al daar gedink, ek dink wel ek het nog nie daar gepraat nie, maar een boek oor al die interviews, Jy weet, daar kan een hele section wees, een hele ding wat gaan oor die Stellenbosch Music Boom. Even die Pretoria Music Boom, ek meen, daar soos hele klomp bands en kunstenaars wat de wat klomp Pretoria bewegings begin het. Ek, ek denk, een hele uh, wat podcast boek sal bevolk wees, jy weet, ons noem het soos um, stories uit Willemse Garage, jy weet, uh, uitgegeer dier Tafelberg of dier Heman en Rousseau of dier Jonathan Ball Publishers. Imagine dit, maar dan moet ek gaan sit en al die interviews transcribe en dit klink na kaak mission. En ek denk hier dat die boek gaan so hard verkoop dat mense een transcribeerder, as ek mense noem, een transcriber, iemand gaan aanstel wat dier, ek het nou rag opgetel, toe ek hier by episode 150 kom, as jylle allemaal by mekaar tel, die, die tye van elke episode, dan kom het neer op 9 dae non-stop. So as jy sal pleid druk by episode 1, dan gaan het jou dwars dier 9 dae vat, om dier hulle allemaal te luister. So ek weet nou nie, wie daai alles gaan transcribe nie. Maar oké, okay, Wander, daar is een goeie plan, dankie vir jou brief, ek waardeer het. Sien mense het goed gestuurd, terwijl ek weg was, hier is nog ene, wat sê die persoon? Wat? 
is in die subject line van Donovan Thatcher. Willem, wat my keer? Uh, the podcast has gone radio silent and I need to know that you are okay. I am okay, Donovan. <laughs> it doesn't have to come back right away. I know life gets in the way, but at least at some point, please tell us you'll be back. Perfectly willing to pay for the content too. Hope all is well. Take good care, Don- Donovan Thatcher from Somerset West. My fuck, a Engelsman wat luister na in die show. Maar sien jy nou, jy weet, hy luister probably na hierdie intro ook en vandag praat ek met die persoon wat Engels praat in de Sunny Fox. Uh, Donovan, I'm back and sorry for being away and uh, yeah, shit, what can I say? Forgive me. If you want to support the podcast, uh, Donovan, you can go to williamwelfare.com. There is a, uh, a donation button that you can follow if you want to support the podcast. Or you can just buy a What Podcast t-shirt online. I mean, there are never t-shirts online. There are never Akadis t-shirts online. So go to williamwelfare.com to and then click it up the um, What Podcast web shop on my merch section. And I will for you a Blitzkrieg t-shirt or a What Podcast t-shirt or you can even for you Akadis t-shirt. Bestel. Donovan, that's right up your alley because Akadis is from Somerset West. They live there and their house is called Chateau Lazard and I'm getting more and more bands on board to join my online t-shirt shop. So Donovan, do that. Thank you for writing um, that email. But it was not so. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I can all my tabs to make. Fuck it. Okay, I will next week have a few brieflies. And then I will tell you a few gigs. What lay for? The first gig that for lay is the end of this month. It is on the 29th and the 31st March. I think we play on the 31st March. This is by the Gifberg Spookfeest in Van Rijnsdorp. En uh, dit is gereel dier Herman Kleinhans, hy was al op die podcast show, gaan luister sy interview, en uh, sy bands naam is Twee, en die Meltaert Commissie speel, Koos Kombuy speel, Dion Meiring speel, Wellens Swart, Gian Groen, Wouter van de Venter, um, ek en my band Willem Welsijn, ons, uh, ons four-piece band, ons gaan na Joel en Meltsie braag, hy is ek die media, en hy gaan seker die MC wees, en of sal ek een bykie komedie ook sien daar, en Stein de Wet, Lise Meinhardt, The Young Folks, Sterre met Jaak, en Jakoos Kepers, en jy kan jou kaartjies gaan bespreek by, of gaan koop by Quicket, of jy kan net gifbergspook at gmail.com een e-mail stuur, as jy Digel wil bywoon. Dit so, gaan na type van, ek denk hier, dit is een commercial festival, en ek denk hier is Herman Kleinhans een birthday weekend, en hy het een klomp buddies van hom gekry om te kom Joel daar, so dit is wat ons gaan doen daar nawek, so as jy wil deel wees van een van een legendarische nawek van Rijnsdorp, jy wil een bykie die stad uitkom, dan stel ek voor, jy klim in jou kar, vrijdag die 29ste, of even donderdag die 28ste, maybe, ek weet nie, stuur die e-mail na, gifbergspook at gmail.com, en dan gaan fok een paar jaar bykie daar van Rijnsdorp, by die gifbergspookfeest. Wat nog, ok, 4, 5 mei, nee, wacht, in april het ons eerste gig, kom ons check hier, is so, is dit in april? Nee, is jolie in april nie, so as iemand voor die gig het in april, stuur vir my e-mail na williamwelfer at gmail.com, ok, wacht, hier so, ons speel ook by die Wild Olive Acoustic Stage, en dit is by die 2019 Ribiek Valley Olive Festival, dit is by uh, Ribiek Kasteel, denk ek, ja, so ga na Ribiek uh, Sellers.com toe, as jou kaartjies wil koop, allemaal op die, dit is een acoustic vibe, so ek en Gertz gaan daar acoustic set doen, en jy kan jou kinders bring, uh, dit is a, dit is een dagfeest, dit begin die vrijdag, en dit, dit, dit hou aan op die saterdag, maar dan maak soos die middag, 5 uur die klaas, so jy kan, dier die dag kom lekker dag dronk raak, en dan kan jy in die avond nog jy actually die rugby kyk, en huis toe gaan, jy weet, en fine wees. Dit is die 4 en die 5de mei, 2019, en op haar line-up is Fransje van Kouk, Jesse Jordan, Sunset Sweatshop, jy staat is altyd een tangtwister, Soetmelk, Jake Gunn, uh, my buddy Groenies, Jack Groenewald, en uh, Willem Welsijn, en Fransje Haasbroek, wat ook al op die show was, um, so jy op hierdie show was, <laughs> so jy gaan koop jou kaartjies, by uh, ribeksellers.com, en dit is uh, die 4 en die 5e mei, uh, wat is nog voor, oh, en dan speel ons by Strap, die mense van Pretoria, as jylle die Willem Welsen band wil check, uh, dan weet ek jylle gaan Strap toekom, meeste van die kaartjies is uitverkoop, maar hou maar Facebook dop, want soms so, weet, so maand of twee of drie weke voor die festival, dan, uh, dan begin partij mense hulle kaartjies swaai, want dan, dan moet hulle iets anders doen, my bedoel na week, maar so ver ek weet, is al nie erg baie kaartjies oor die, jy kan gaan na strap, dat sê dat jy reid toe, maar Konrad het vir my gesê, daar is nie erg meer plek oor die, maar gaan check het maar anyway uit, jy weet, dit is die 22ste tot die 26ste mei in Mozambique, as jy paspoort het, en jy het een bykie kontanas vir travel, en vir R&R drink, dan stel ek voor, jy kom check ons bykie uit by strap, 
um, Ponta Molongan, 22ste tot die 26ste mei. En wat het ek nog om te pand, het ek gaan dink hierso, want ek is weer terug in die garage, ek moet weer my bearings vind, en uh, ja, ja, oh ja, ek het twee limited edition Blitzkrieg Braaikaster stainless steel gitaar roosters, nog oor. Ek het 6 gehad na die dag, ek het nog 2 oor. So as jy nou wil hees, stuur vir my e-mail na williamwelfare.gmail.com toe. Die mense wat al van tevore belang gestel het, ek het hulle e-mail, maar hulle kom nie terug na my toe nie, want jy weet, dis a legit fucking ding, en hy kost paar rand, en as jy in wil hee, dan moet jy vir my e-mail stuur, want ek het nog 2 oor, en ek sal hom vir jou uh, hou, as jy sê jy betaal. So stuur die e-mail na williamwelfare.gmail.com toe. As jy nog nie gehoor het van die Blitzkrieg Braaikaster nie, gaan hashtag net Braaikaster, b r a i k Double A S T E R op Instagram of Facebook en check je prankje van die braaikaster. Ik meen dat ze bij een nieke gift. Als je oom of je opa of je tani wat braai of iemand voor jaar, dan ga je veel eens puf percent kan koop. Dus dit van mijn kant af. Ik denk ons moet nou begin gezels met Sunny Fox, want ze een nieuwe album uit en ze het keer al die pad van Londen af en uh, en ik heb altijd gewonnen door Sunny, want zij komt van een baie famous talentvolle familie af en ik heb gewonnen waar hoe past zijn die story in en ek het gewonder oor die daar van machinery, en ek het gewonder oor andere geldernis, en ek het gewonder oor die blues, en ja, oor al die vakatore, en al die influences, so ons gaan vandag daar praat. So strap jezelf in, en, uh, en geniet die gesprek wat ek het met Sunny Fox, uh, gaan check haar nieuwe album uit, die nieuwe albums naam is My Soul Got Stranger. Weet jy wat, gaan check sommer alle muziek uit. O, wacht, so, um, weet, ek kan nou actually gaan live kyk vanavond, as jy hierdie luister op die 15de maart 2019, dan kan jy vanavond gaan kyk, by Cafe Roo in Kaapstad, by uh, Short Market Street, dit is uh, 74 Short Market Street, en sy speel saam met Tal Thompson, featuring Tal Thompson, Sunny Fox, featuring Tal Thompson, en de, jy kan jou kaartjes gaan koop, by Cafe Roo Sessions, dot co dot zeray, of gaan volgend vir Sunny Fox op social media, en dan maak jy seker dat jy by die gig uitkom. Dit is by Cafe Roo in Kaapstad, en uh, dit is vanavond, die 15e maart, die show begin 8 uur, of seker maar so negerse kant, maar wees 8 uur daar. Oké, okay, kom ons gesels met Sunny Fox, sy speel nog een show in Zuid-Afrika vanavond, en dan gaan sy terug London toe, so dit is jou laaste kans. Here we go! Mm. I really like it's amazing. I love the artwork you've got going. I love the vibe in here. It's fantastic. Yeah. Very, very at home. Well, that is the idea. You spoke to the child. You, you, you've, you've seen his... Uh, had a tour of his construction <laughs> vehicles. <laughs> yeah. But listen, welcome back to South Africa. When, when, did, you, when did you come back? Um, I got back like yeah, the day before yesterday. Yeah, so, so like, Monday. Monday I arrived. Monday evening, kind of. No, it was in the day, actually. Anyway, but I was exhausted. And then... Uh, we must have passed each other on the on the airport because that was like five ish, five six o'clock. I arrived from China, so on Monday. On Monday, oh yeah. uh, no way! Yeah. You get the, you came in a little bit later, but I also had to do the Dubai stopover mm. in the middle. It was it it's it it it's 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 long. Yeah, we did it six hours. You had to wait six hours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it was three hours for me. Yeah, it's just long because you do that like first flight. Which is, I think, for me, it was like it's about seven hours, yeah. and you feel like, wow, that was long, that was intense, and I was kind of like, was that the? Because like, you start to lose track of time and yeah. like where you are, and your, your watch is saying one time, and your phone's another time, and they've got another time, and then you're like, that felt really. And I was like, that must have been the big stretch, because I know there's a there's a quite a big stretch, and then there's the bigger stretch. And I was like, oh, I think that was the bigger one, and then you look and you're like, oh no, that uh, was the, the little the, one. The big one is Still coming. Got the ten hour one coming. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> And yeah, explain to me before we uh, talk, talk about, about just flights and yeah, airplanes and, and, and why you went. Uh, let's 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 go back like way way back. Way back. Way. So you grew up in Cape Town. I grew up. I grew up. Depending on well, I grew up in London initially because I was actually born in London and okay. then grew up there till I was ten, and then I moved to South Africa, and then I grew up in South Ac- South, South South Africa from the age of ten to now. Okay, so so you've got dual citizenship. I have dual citizenship. Yes. Oh, that's a bonus. Yeah, that's it's, very it's, cool. It's it's very helpful when when you don't have to stand in the line. Because you've got quite a famous family. I I know a little bit of your family. I know I know your 
because your mother uh, worked with my wife on some projects. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As awesome. a simultaneous uh, interpreter and as a translator and as a um, yeah, uh, but basically a language practi- practitioner. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, she's an actress as well. Yeah, she's a she's and a, bit a singer. Of a ninja, my mother. Really? <laughs> oh yeah, she's uh, crazy. She speaks se- well. She speaks seven languages. For starters, she's like a spy. She speaks seven languages. Um, English is like her third language. Wow! And she has she know she her English is better than mine. So she she can she speak, corrects me often. She can speak um, French, um, French, Spanish, French, French, Portuguese, um, English, uh, Portuguese, and French. Oh. Those are like kind of. She speaks German very very well. She speaks Italian. She speaks Spanish and separate Afrikaans. Work. Wow! Yeah. That's fascinating. I know it's crazy. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> what is a mother tongue like? Portuguese. Portuguese. Mm. Okay. When I did general linguistics in university, I remember that they told me that uh, if you learn a language between the age of two and five, your language acquisition capacity in your mind is like very fertile. Yeah, and I yeah. That she learned languages when she was a young girl. Yeah, because I think she grew up. She she was like born in Joburg. She, but both her parents were Portuguese, but she was like born in Joburg, but th- then they went back to Portugal. But then she also grew up like for a little bit in France. She went to school in France for a bit. And then I think she went to like a German school, I don't know, in another year. So she sort of, I think, um, absorbed those languages definitely before the age of 10, I think. Yeah. And then the thing is, port- once you start learning one European language, they have quite similar blueprint, mm. you know, like it's not the same of, as learning maybe a Scandinavian language yes. or like uh, an African language. They have a different architecture. So I guess because they all come from Latin. So the roots and everything and the structure of the language is the same. So you can kind of get an idea. And and then obviously like Portu- Portuguese and Spanish are quite similar. Oh, did I say Italian? She also speaks Italian. <laughs> yeah. Whack. Her Italian's probably not the str- not as strong as the others, but no. she she can understand it. But, but it. It, that reminds me of like the Germanic uh, uh, uh languages. It's yeah. it's like uh, uh Dutch and uh German and Afrikaans and yeah. even I mean even Afrikaans is a combined style, you know. So Afrikaans is great. So so <laughs> we 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 get some influences from from Portuguese Mm-mm. and um and from German and from Dutch and mainly Dutch and yeah, then, German and then definitely there's, there's, there's some hear Cape it. Malay because of the Cape Malay influence yeah, we yeah. get some we get some words there as well yeah. so it's it's a it's a yeah you know? I, I love I love it it's it's beautiful what did your mom do when you were a girl in in London and your dad is a film director yeah well when I when I grew up my mother was quite a busy actress she was in a lot of theater she was shooting a lot of um, sort of television she was shooting like quite s- serious art art house films and cinema um she also actually presented this really cool um television series which you can actually find on youtube mm-hmm. called discovering portuguese and she was like the presenter and it's it's like a like a like a travel show where they go to portugal and she she goes to different like parts of portugal and you know, they film the whole city and she speaks in Portuguese. And then she also like teaches people Portuguese, like while she's explaining the history of, you know, the city and this building or whatever. And um, that's just pretty crazy because I discovered that because now with the Internet, you can, yeah. you know, you can see these things. And I've actually watched it the other day and it's crazy. It's like my mother must be like, she's probably like 31 or, or something, or even younger. I don't even know if I was born yet. It's yeah. young mother of mine like talking just amazing she's and, so good <laughs> but but you, you don't remember her doing that and that and that's um, i did well i know i do because i used to go i used to go and see her backstage and stuff when she was at the theater and i would i would hang around with her at shows and things and then they would show me the movies and so i was i was very i, I was very absorbed in the, in the whole world of everything oh that's fascinating yeah because that is so like not the story of an, of an average afrikaans or english girl from south africa i guess no like so at the age of 10 moving you guys moved back or you moved to, to to south africa yeah yeah was that a big transition for you i was huge actually that was a massive transition for me and i i found it actually i found it difficult i struggled with that transition for many years because uh, the worlds are so unbelievably different and i even like really see it now living in london like how even though things are very different but just it they couldn't be kind of more opposite like oh. the cities cape town and london just everything is so different so i think it's 
I think it's understandable that it was it was difficult for me, like in a lot of ways, you know. Was Such it this, but, different mentality, different yeah. people, different, just very, very different. But yeah. but like adapting to like the new like a new school, you know. Yeah, D- totally new school, different kids. Like 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 I was in a very um, I was in a co-ed school. Mm. It was like it was it was it was um kind of religious, but they weren't very religious. Like you know, and then I went to quite a religious sort of semi uh, religious Anglican school and it was all girls which was, was very weird for me like yeah. and um that's still weird for me thinking about that today because yeah, I, it's strange, I, I, I didn't it? go to like an all boys school I'm like from a small town so yeah yeah hearing other uh, buddies of mine who play in bands and stuff who went to like fucking boys eye or one of those schools yeah, it just freaks me out I'm like fuck like j- just dudes in the class I know that must be weird it's kind of strange yeah I think they went through this teething period where they tried to like do this experiment with putting boys in the school yeah. and they had like these guinea pigs of like five little boys that they put in standard four or something it was just really weird cause all these girls and then they were just these five little boys that you would see in the school it was really strange I don't think it worked out because they're still all girls now and, and that was in Cape Town <laughs> Yeah, that was yeah. in Cape Town. Wow. Obviously, the first time you were exposed to something like Afrikaans kids. So, sort of. I always came, because my dad's South African, his family mm. were always here. So I always visited South Africa okay. as a young child. So it wasn't like the first time I'd been to South Africa. So I was still, I'd still heard Afrikaans all around. My parents used to speak, in, my parents used to speak, they used to argue in Afrikaans so that I couldn't understand what wow. they were saying when I was a kid, I remember. <laughs> That's a typical Afrikaans. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then... Uh, yeah, so it wasn't like a completely foreign world, which is why, which is which is cool. Like so, which is why I feel like it's like I have a bit of a, like dual sort of identity in a way, you know, because yeah. I was always coming to South Africa from when I was very small. Um, so, but being sunny, I mean, now y- your name is Sunny. Yeah, yeah. That's so, so obviously the Afrikaans boys or girls are like yo Sunny. Yeah, always. But but skirt Sunny. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're like because that is such an uh, an Afrikaans storybook name. You, you don't totally. hear you don't hear like people calling their kids Sunny. No, you know no. because it's like uh, this is Buten Sarki. Or, you know, it's one of those names. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Don't, you don't call your kid that name. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. It's like a it's like a fictitious name almost. Yeah, it's like it's old. It's like a really old traditional. It's it's real, dude. I was named after my uh, my great grandmother. Her name was Sunny Ace. And that is Ace Krieger's mother. That is his mom. Yeah. Wow. So no, because I, I know the Ace Krieger connection. Yeah. Via our conversation one drunk night, I'm like, is that really for real? I actually fucking googled it because yeah. I studied Afrikaans Netherlands at, uh, at Stellenbosch, like a mid twenties crisis degree, yeah, yeah, yeah. and learned all about Ice Krieger because it was uh, part of the Dertigers, yeah, 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 and, and yeah. then the Sestigers, which is Breite Breitenbach and Ingrid Jonker and those guys under the Brink, yeah, they were like opposed the against, legends. yeah, they were like opposed against, they were like the the punk rock against the Dertigers, totally. you know, totally. But, but you needed the Dertigers to get the the Sestigers. <laughs> You know, <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah. I remember some of his poetry and stuff, l- learning that, and like that is your grandmother's brother. That's my grandmother's brother. Yeah, yeah. So there's like a very, uh, very, very strong links and strong, strong roots to Afrikaans for me with my family. Do you see that coming through in your music? Um, I, it's definitely got to be in there. I mean, obviously, I'm not. I don't sing in Afrikaans, so it's not there. Like through the through the language, but it's there through my blood, you know, and it's there through growing up around my grandmother my whole life you know yeah. she's still alive like um i never met ace but you know it's uh, my father is very close to his mother it's just it's very there you know we talk yeah. about them their photos it's my family so all the stories their films of of them when they were younger like so it's it's definitely within me you know yeah because when researching uh, I always do like a little quick Google search before chat because you don't want to go in. You, know, <laughs> yeah. you want to go in like no, no. I'll get my answers when we have the chat. You know, you, you yeah, want to yeah. be prepared because sometimes. Oh, well, it's I've, great. Some people don't do that. They don't do that because <laughs> on other conversations, then someone would tell me something very obvious from them, and I'm like, oh, really? And then I fucking look like an idiot, and and that's not the point, but. The last time I saw you perform was at Up the Creek, and that was near Swellin Dam. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And I saw, like, I was fucking... The thing is, it, it would take me down to the spiral. You, know, you go through the Google spiral. Like, and I, then I, oh, I love and, it. I love the Google spiral. And, and then I, I Google fucking Ice Krieg. I'm like, okay, cool. He was born near Swellin Dam. Yeah, yeah. My, my, my Oma spent a lot of time in Swellin Dam. Uh, the last time I saw you perform was in Swellin Dam. 
And then I saw he died near Armanus, and you're going to be playing in Armanus. Onrus. And, and Onrus. Onrus was the family house. Onrus yeah. was, was, was Ace's house with Eulalia, his daughter, and I always hear and see the photos and everything. And I used to go there as well as a, as a small child. Ace wasn't alive anymore, but we still used to go there. Yeah. And they used to, they all grew up playing in that, that dam there and their, their poems about it. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 I know all about it. <laughs> Fuck, it's work. Yeah. It's crazy. Because, because in your family history, I mean, we didn't even speak about your grandfather, the famous architect. <laughs> yeah, no, this yeah, is, that's the a whole other side. That's, the, that's this, like the English South African side. This is like the South African royal tenor bombs, almost. <laughs> have, you, have you thought about it like that? <laughs> no, 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 now that you mention it. <laughs> Remember that cool. film? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's awesome, it's awesome. Because you got but, these characters with, with very like special skills, you know. It's, yeah. it's, it's a pedigree. Of and now you, yeah. you, you're like the third generation, and, you, and that pedigree is still going. You know, yeah. Everyone's just everyone's just really creative. I had this conversation the other day with with Willem Samuel, and he is the son of Anki Kroch. Ah, okay. And, and he's a graphic uh, novelist, or you know, what do you call it? He, he writes graphic novels, and he's a okay. illustrator. And yeah. obviously, his mom is, is Anki Kroch. Yeah, and, yeah. And wow. me and him spoke about. An interview with uh, uh, Duncan Jones, the son of uh, uh, of David Bowie, who's a filmmaker, you know, and, yes. and, and I, I, I use that analogy to ask him questions, yeah, because sometimes people feel like, or like a next generation, like imagine being fucking Jacob Dylan, yeah, okay? yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or being Sean Lennon. Imagine yeah. being that guy. Yeah. You know, that's such a big shadow to, to move out yeah, of. And yeah. How do you find your, your own creative space? Yeah, totally. And did you ever go through something like that because of your family? I mean, Greta Fox is your aunt. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, fuck, yeah. I grew up watching her on TV. And that <laughs> is, that's insane. <laughs> it's crazy, yeah. Um, I think, I think, uh, I guess, I guess, I guess it's, I just, I, I love it. I love being under the umbrella of, of, of all of these really, like beautiful creative souls and I guess the thing for me is that I ended up going into music so I, I carved my own identity identity through my own medium because you know Greta's in acting uh, Revel is architecture Sunny Sunny was a pianist actually she was actually in music as well she also wrote yeah. a, uh, Ace was a writer so I've kind of got my own my own bag you know the yeah. music bag yeah um your own island to stand on. Yeah, exactly. And I'm also like I'm like third generation in a way. You know, Greta's my aunt, but I mean I'm the I'm the youngest. You know, I'm not no. the son. I'm the grandchild sort of generation. Do you have siblings? No. <laughs> You're only child. Yeah. No, because we're gonna have an only child. Only children are great. <laughs> don't always, worry about I, it. I always want to talk about. Do you that, have siblings? You know? I've got a sister. Yeah. You know, okay. One sister. So I don't know how to. How it is all the cliches are like yeah, um, selfish, selfish, self-absorbed, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, okay, fine, but but maybe if you give them the tools not to be like that, I yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, you just 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 teach them how to share from when they're young. You know, my mother used <laughs> yeah. to do that. My mother used to do that. She used to like hit me. She'd be like, share, share your things. You better share your stuff. You know, I, you know, she used to take my things away and like give them to someone else. I used to find it very difficult, but. But but I, now I, I share. I got used to it. I share. I share. I share sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not talking about links and shit like that. You know, like like real no, like, like food. Like my chocolate. <laughs> like my last chocolate. <laughs> it depends. It depends who wants it. <laughs> how much? Do, how much do I like you? <laughs> okay. Now now tell me, Sonny. Growing up, uh, you being a creative person, <coughs> where did it start the music for you? Uh, the, the first the first uh, instrument was piano because my mother used to take me to have lessons like on and off from yeah. when I was small. So I started sort of with classical stuff and reading and everything, but I never used to do, last very long because I didn't really like to practice, to be honest. Mm. I didn't used to, I didn't enjoy the, I didn't want to commit to the work that goes into learning to read music, which I regret now. I wish I had had the discipline to like stick with it. But the thing is I have like, I just had from a young age, like a super like, open ear mm. so i have no difficulty playing an instrument by ear you know i can just i can just twirl around on that thing till the cows come home making songs and linking things whatever you know so i used to kind of start off like trying to read and then i would just kind of get distracted and start just playing like my own thing you know <laughs> and then the teacher would be like 
you clearly haven't practiced, you know, go yeah, home. You're, you're winging it now. Yeah, you're just fucking winging it. So, 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 yeah, it's, it's, so, it's anyway, so, so I had, I had like, so it was good to have basics. So I have basic, like, I've got like basic understanding of music and chords and keys and scales and all that. So that's really good. And I'm starting actually now at a later, later age to get more and more into it. Like, um, I actually want to, you know, I really want to start to learn to read and just get more into the intricacies, yeah. actually, of the theory of music. Just, just a bit, because I've never really, never really delved like into it too much, you know. So um, I'm enjoying getting into it now. And and then we had a piano, and I just used to play on that. And then at the age of 19, I I, I was staying somewhere where there's no piano, so I ended up with a guitar. And then I just started to teach myself like how to play guitar. Yeah, and because a piano is a very static instrument that's that stands in a corner or in a yeah. room. Yeah, yeah. And, and a guitar can be a very cool traveling companion. Totally. You know, no, it's, it's yeah. a little bit more user-friendly. No, no, totally. And then it also, like, for me, it's suited, it's suited more, I think, the the vibe of 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 my expression no. which was more a bit edgier i think and more i don't know man it's just i think it just suited me better i i do love playing keys but it mm. almost has more of a second instrument i think yeah like a palette yeah it, it's not going to be the main thing exactly because the, the the cool thing about you and you know like the band dudes they yeah. talk yeah yeah you know? yeah of course and they, they they're like a fucking sewing circle yeah, yeah 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 yeah. and i'm not <laughs> tuning you this to blow smoke up your ass but you're a fucking amazing guitarist like, oh, thank the, you the people would say like fuck you're funny sunny sunny sunny, sunny fuckers have got a fucking shit down you know she uh, make the, the, the thing is you're a heavy guitarist but you don't there's not a lot of drive yeah, like, yeah. like distortion yeah. on your guitar yeah 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 you don't play very hard you play very delicately but yeah, your yeah. sound is very it's almost you you almost got that fucking Mark Knopfler technique down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you don't have to go hard into the strat. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You actually know how that instrument works. Yeah. So so I want to ask you, like, guitar specific. When you yeah. started playing guitar yeah, after yeah. piano, yeah. Uh, what were you listening to and, and, and what was, like, that first guitar you picked up? You know, what kind of guitar was it? Well, the, the first guitar that I had was an acoustic guitar and mm -hmm. it was a piece of shit. Like, it didn't play well at all and I didn't play well at all. My relationship with guitar... Um, has gone through many stages and for me to get to this point where I am and, and long may it keep growing and keep evolving. But it started off very much just sounding terrible, you know, and trying to like, just like, I remember like trying to learn bar chords even and just like, how the fuck do people play a bar chord? This is so hard. Yeah, it hurts. Like, I can't do it. You know, I still can't I'll do never the F. be able to do it. Yeah, the F is killer. Oh, it's horrible. I don't think because I can even so, do F. It's so close it's to Aina. the nut, you know. No, it's, it's, it's too fuck much. Fuck the it's, F. It's too much. <laughs> fuck that, man. Fuck that. Um, yeah, so... Uh, and then and I also like I was uh, I was always in the in the in the place of sort of the rhythm guitarist because no. I started I would like form bands and then I'd always get a lead guitarist. I don't know why I, I did that, I guess, because I just never saw myself really as a lead guitarist. And then that was that was how it worked. So my, my relationship with guitar was very much as a rhythm guitarist for a long, a long time, like. And what I would start to play lead because I would be, I was always recording music. I started recording music from when I was 19 as well, which was oh, wow. a whole new, amazing world. Like on a tape deck or something? No, 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 no. I had a really weird German recording program someone gave me called Magix. Yeah. Magix. And uh, you, could do, you could do all the things on it, man. Um, it, it was like Pro Tools, I guess, but just a lower like oh. level so it was um, like a recording unit like a little box thing yeah you had your your tracks and you could you could um you could bring in your drum loops and record all your layers of vocals cool. bass you could do all the same stuff you could do in pro Tools. so that's what i started doing and that was like that was like like nirvana to me yeah. i was just like oh my god i would like sit in my room like 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 10 hours would just fly by because i would just sit Start there like la layering re layering recording because 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 i i can because I, I like i like writing songs yeah. so you know i would just be, pull in a drum beat and then and then just write bass lines you know use my guitar and then just take it a pitch down or something or use my key you often use the keys to write bass yeah. you know and and then I could harmonize with the vocal. I mean, it was just heaven, and it's still heaven for me today. Like it's but still so, Sunny, this yeah. is this is fascinating because it's it's almost as if you you already did your studio course while learning yeah. your instrument, where yeah. other guys have to 
play and experiment and eventually go into a studio setup and not yeah. know how that works. Yeah. Thinking that you and the full band are going to stand there doing it live. Yeah. Some people do that now. But, 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 <laughs> yeah, but, but, yeah. but, but the same thing is not get the layering thing of actually building and yeah. producing a song. Yeah. No, I was like so into that already from a young, from a young age. And that's how I started to write s- solos because I was like, okay, this is going to be a great place for a lead break. Yeah. And then I would start to write these really dodgy solos like <laughs> that would like start off like quite well and then sort of you know fizzle out the, f- yeah. f- fizzle out and stuff you know but but they would have good moments they'd have like good moments um but then so so those are the first like you know but i was still very much rhythm and then all the way up until machinery i was always rhythm 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 yeah and uh what was your first electric guitar or was it chat no no it wasn't it was like a it's probably a squire no, I think it was like a squire. A squire, yeah, but but squire is like but a, a shit squire. It yeah, wasn't. It was like, it wasn't a, like, a, like like a, like a fender copy. It was a shit one though. Like but a, I mean, but it had the shape of a strat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was black. It was black like that, yeah. and it probably cost like two thousand rand. Yeah, yeah, and it would just go out of tune all the time. I, I still have my squire. It was yeah, like yeah. the first, like the first electric <laughs> thing, you know. Yeah, but but. but that's where because you've got a a very single coil kind of sound. Yeah, you know you can hear that. I love sort of, riffs. Yeah, you've got I love and, riffs. and I, I can hear you using that uh, that neck pickup a lot of times as well. Yeah, but I'm moving away from that now actually because you got the guild. Because I got the guild. So you know you're so you on the evolution, now. Uh, evolution. You know, evolving, like changing. You know, but, but that that would be. I mean, you d- you didn't record on the guild on the latest album. I did. You did. No. Yeah. No, wait, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, you're right. No, of course I didn't because I wasn't in London yet. I only got that guild when I went to London. Oh, yeah. I recorded that one with my black, my black strat. Yeah, the ones you always had with, machi- with uh, machinery. Yeah, and I actually borrowed like a jazz master, I think, for Criminal or one of the other songs, another guitar that was yeah. lying around the studio just for fun. Um, what were you listening to while discovering the electric guitar? It was definitely, it was, it was, um, I was listening to a lot of I was listening to a lot of Ali Fakature because you have that. I, I yeah. made a note there. Ali yeah. fucking Fakature. Yeah, no, I, I, I was listening to that a lot. I, I think it was the Ali Fakature, and then it later the on got into Vieux, yeah, his yeah. son, his son, He's yeah, fucking amazing. Um, saw him live. Saw them both live. I've seen <sighs> them both live. Um, so that, and then I was listening to all that like seventies, like Pink. I was listening to Pink Floyd. Yeah, Zep. Um, listening to Led Zeppelin. Um, Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. So, for yeah, for guitar stuff, those those were kind of those were the electric kind of guitar influences, the strong ones that I was. Oh, Johnny Hooker. Yeah. Big big one for me. Okay, now being a girl listening to all these fucking male, all these male guys yeah. riffing on yeah, guitars. Really, yeah, yeah. Did you have like some friends or other girls who did that? Because that's very interesting for me being a guy guitarist. One of my favorite guitarists now is fucking Annie Clark, like St. Vincent. I can't get enough of uh, her. Oh, yeah, she's yeah. So she's fucking she's really there. cool. Yeah, yeah. She's amazing. And, and the, the first thing I, uh, I... She's actually got her own guitar. Yeah, she's yeah. From like the designed. Music Man. Like it's, the Ernie Ball Music Man. She's yeah. tiny little... Look. I'd like to And it looks very Space out. Age vibes. And you know? light. It looks and, light as a feather. When, when, when I saw Machinery for the first time and listened to it, I was like, fuck, this is good. You know, it's, it's grooving and it's yeah, got this yeah, very yeah. hypnotic kind of rhythms. Yeah, yeah. And, riffy, and, 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 the, and the guitar work was something I haven't heard before in South Africa. This wasn't some... Like another... Uh, how do you call them? Like a, an, another white guy playing the Strat, you know, trying to sing yeah. the blues, but 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 you're fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it yeah. wasn't that, yeah, yeah. you know. So it's very interesting. Interesting to me, a girl guitarist who's got who can sing and who's got her own fucking style. You know, yeah. where did that come from? I, I think it just comes from having these all these influences, like through um, okay, through my family, like and the music that comes through my family like my mother's portuguese so i have this like i have very strong links to like uh fado music mm. which is very beautiful traditional folk music portuguese folk music and the scales in fado like they're very very beautiful um and the vocals are very beautiful so i have like these mixes you know and then there's that 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 love for for folk and blues um but then loving Etta James and Kate Bush. I also like my, I love classical music as well. So I think it's just this weird, like it's just the result yeah. of a lot of different influences, you know, like I'm quite open-minded 
with music. I like, you know, and then also having these South African, you know, I was listening to Mohotela Queens as well. I was listening to Bayete. I was oh. listening to Busi Mshongo. Like, I'm listening to that and I'm listening to Fado. And that's all filtering in to my soul and what comes out. So I guess that's what comes out, you know. Because that's a, ve- that's a very... It's a very acquired adult taste in music, you it's know. Just, yeah. You don't hear about a lot of kids going that deep and that broad when you're talking about classical and yeah. actually appreciating it because yeah. a lot of kids listen to music because it's an identity thing for them. Yeah. So yeah. they get like, uh, they, they play themselves in the corner, like only listening to this kind of punk rock, you know. Yeah. yeah. And they never get out of that scene or yeah. just listening to this kind of metal where, yeah. where your spectrum is quite fucking broad. It's, it's huge. It's a really big spectrum. Like, um, yeah, it's 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 big. Okay, now when you were nineteen, um, uh, you've got this recorder. You're experimenting and recording and layering. Um, you obviously finished school. Where did you go to school in Cape Town? I went to school. I went to St. Cyprian School. That was the kind of like all girls vibe. And then I left there and matriculated at. I did like nine and ten at Abbott's College. Okay, um, so like a private college thing. Um, I what think I mean, like I, a private school kind of setup. Uh, I don't know if it's private. It was, it's quite like mellow. It's like everyone. It's like civvies clothing. Ah. You could smoke. Okay, yeah, that's like the, the Afrikaans can do this. a private school. Yeah, you can long order that. I think it's work. where a lot of the rejects end up. Actually, <laughs> like all the crazy ones end up at those <laughs> those but, colleges. <laughs> but, but were you one of those kids? One of the rejects? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was a little bit we, of a crazy, a crazy bit re- fucker, <laughs> a bit rebellious. Yeah, definitely. I was. Super, you partied? Yeah, I was super. Yeah, I partied a lot. I was, you played the guitar. Uh, Crazy. Yeah, yeah, I played the guitar. I've played the guitar though more after school, if you think about it, because I was 19. So yeah. I was already out of school then. And I, then I was like going to university. Um, and you studied, uh, what did you study in university? I studied um, theater. theater. Theater and performance and English literature. But yeah, mainly like theater. I was at uh, Michaela's campus for four years, just doing plays and learning Shakespeare. Wow. And. Um, Brecht and all and, that kind and of stuff. And Eiskrieger translated sp- uh, Shakespeare. Yeah, totally. Uh, how spiff is that? Exactly. It's, ama- it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. And obviously you knew that while you were doing that. Yeah. Well, we would sometimes be learning like an Eiskrieger poem like, they'd be, and I'd be like, I'm just going to like, you know. Yeah, you, you never played those cards. Yeah, no, 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 no. But I actually sung. I, I was, um, it was really, it was really fun. I, uh, I was playing Wurtfies. Yeah. Just, uh, the last one before I left um, to go to London because they just had it now, right? Yeah, it's, it's coming it's in just next about, two weeks, okay. yeah. And uh, I actually did a song that I've been working on on and off for the last like y- bunch of years and it's a poem of his called Ballada yeah. and I put it to music and I've made it into a song and we did that with like a whole bunch of like s- other singers and stuff and it was really, really cool to sing in Afrikaans and at Wordfus so people can like really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, did you give them did you give them some context about yeah. why 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 singing that? Yeah, yeah. I didn't really I just I just said, you know, I didn't really like I was just like this is this is an ace poem. Yeah. It's called Lada. It's about this, da, 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 and this you, how it you, goes. You didn't say you're family of Ace Krichers. No. Why not? I don't know. I guess I don't know. I guess I didn't want to play that card mm. in a way. It's interesting. But I guess I should probably, next next time, I, I guess I could say that. Afrikaans people love shit like that. Yeah. They will go, wow. Okay, next time I'm going to say. Yeah, totally. My oomie. Yeah, my oom. My groot oom. My groot oom. My groot oom. It's like a wonder, what, what, do you, what do you call someone? I think uh, technically it's a cousin. Yeah, I think you're the cousin. Mm-hmm. But for me, it's it's a big uncle. Yeah, big uncle. Yeah, <laughs> it almost makes voice. It's my Oma's brother. So it's yeah. Like, <laughs> okay, so so yeah. tell me about your first bands. Uh, okay, first bands were um, all girl band was the first one, Black mm-hmm. Betty, which was so great. Um, I played with really nice friends of mine, uh, Galina and Hagar, and there was a Hagar was on lead guitar, and then Galina played violin. So it was like super folk. I played acoustic guitar, very, very folky, very bluesy. And um, that was that was really great because that was the intro to... That was when people started to ask me what I do. And for the first time, I was like, I'm a musician. Because that was the beginning of actually this hanging, career. Hanging, hanging, your, hanging your hat on that identity. Yeah. Like playing gigs, getting booked, starting to get paid money, people coming to see you. Like... 
so that was that was really a pivotal like moment you know in 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 my in the beginning of everything and then we got we got drum and bass and we expanded it to five beats oh. um we had like a number of different rhythm sections who were who were usually they were guys so it wasn't like only a all girl thing and then we called that mama no nothing um so the band got bigger and band got bigger new name yeah band got bigger and we had a lot of fun playing like that. I think we were like two years Black Betty and then two years Mama Know Nothing, something like that. And then after that came Machinery. So did you guys uh, record uh, those two bands? We didn't really like, I think because it was so early stages, we were all a bit like, I don't know, like it was the beginning and everything. We didn't have our ducks in a row so much. We were very young. We were all studying and stuff. So oh. we didn't even really know about recording, I guess. We started to get into it and we, we had some... We only had like rough recordings, like someone maybe at a like gig, a demo thing, yeah. like a demo. I recorded uh, Mama Know Nothing. I recorded us in studio, like once. Um, so we have one like semi decent recording, which is which I'm really glad that we have. Yeah, um, because like it's part of that spark of that puzzle. Yeah, in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's a really lovely. It's a really like I love the song. It's called Time Seven. I think it's on my on my SoundCloud and it's on my website. Oh, cool. Um, so. And then we just have, like, other than that, we've got demos. Machinery was the band where the real recording began. That and was, how, how did that band start? That band started because I wanted to, I was in Mama Know Nothing and I wanted to do something else because I had a lot of time and I was, Mama Know Nothing had, it was difficult to get everyone into a rehearsal room. Everyone oh. was studying, so... People were kind of spread out, you know, trying to do other things. And I think I was at that point really wanting to get like 100% into music. Like I didn't want to be like waiting yeah. and stuff. Not to fuck around, you want to commit. Yeah, I wanted to commit. I wanted to get shit done. Like, so I sort of, it started, I think, as, a, as an idea to do on the side. And then I think it just, it became so easy machinery because it was pretty much just me and Andre, the guitarist. And we were able to meet up because he was also, he was like, a model so he had so much time to just jam you know so so i just kind of thought this is going to be the way i'm going to go because i can i can really commit to this you because know? um i remember i was briefly friends with andre Geldenice, so it's mm. Andre mm -mm. in the time when i worked at rolling stone and that yeah, was yeah. like oh wow yeah so in, that brings in, back memories yeah in in that time i remember seeing him at like rocking the daisies and i remember you guys were still going uh, uh machinery the band and he was such a cool dude. Yeah, you know? yeah. And we hang. We had similar friends, you know. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. and I haven't seen him since that time. You yeah, know? yeah. And uh, uh, because that's that was my that was my hook into that band. But I remember yeah. Andre being a very uh, a, 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 a fucking amazing musician. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And uh, and you guys had a chemistry on stage. So, yeah. So when Machinery started, what uh, did it start with you and Andre uh, yeah. specifically together like like you like two guitarists yeah. and then you got a drummer because you, you guys didn't have a bass guitar yeah no we never got a bass guitar um, it almost just initially started just with me and him and I think we even played some gigs or recorded some stuff already just with the two guitars and then then we got a drummer and then I don't know it just seemed to like the gigs were so fun and it was quite rocking and stuff, so we just didn't really, we just didn't really get a basis because we didn't really need one. Yeah. Like people just were digging it. Like some people would be like, "Oh, you guys don't have a bass, like you get a bass." You know, <laughs> we just be like, "Fuck you, <laughs> we don't need a basis." So um, kept on. <laughs> yeah, but uh, look, if if we if we'd stayed together and we carried on, I'm sure like by the second or third album, mm. we would have been like. Let's do an album with bass. Yeah. Like let's 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 try it with bass. Like because I think it does need bass eventually. Like otherwise you just you just don't get that. And what I'm what I'm actually enjoying now um, is I haven't really played a lot of the Machinery songs because I kind of like wrote a lot of all of those songs. Yeah. And I've always played Big Bad Machine, which is really really fun i mean I've, I've played that for years i still play that in my set all the time but i haven't played any of the other ones like for years and i'm starting to go back to some of them now but i'm playing them with a bassist and then one guitar and it's really really cool to have that low end yeah um because it's very grooving songs yeah it's, and it's groovy very, and it's very rhythmic and very and the kick is always fucking going on that yeah, songs yeah yeah 
get some bass on that. And I was always wondering because yeah, I, it's I, cool. I, I remember hearing Big Bad Machine on 5M for the first time. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, what is this? You know, and why is that kick so thumping? Probably because there was no bass. Yeah, so the, so the engineer or the <laughs> so producer. We were, turn or that kick up, man. Yeah, because it was, it was pumping and that, yeah. and that gives a whole new dynamic to this. Yeah, that song. was crazy. That's like in the days where you could get on 5FM in a band with no bass. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. rock band, you, like, guys, you guys got on five of them. I'm still trying. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, no, forget about it, man. It's like I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so so starting with with Andre with uh, uh with Machinery, uh, you guys did that one album and it's a fucking amazing album. And and when I started working Rolling Stone, that that, that album was played in the office all the time. You know. Ah, uh, cool. So I remember Georgia and Anne Marie. Like she was a creative director. Of Georgia and Anne Marie was like the sub editor, or whatever. And like both of them, they listened to that album just constantly in, right. the, in the in the office. And then I was like, okay, cool. And then I saw you guys live. And I'm like, fuck, this is, a, this is a cool band, you know. It doesn't sound like something else in South Africa. Yeah, yeah. And 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 at Rolling Stone, working there, when you would review an album or uh, like interview a band, you would you would always try to get that band where. They're doing something that doesn't sound like they're trying to be an American band. Yeah, yeah. Or they yeah. sound like they're trying to be a UK fucking punk band or whatever. You, yeah. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna compare them with, was, are they breaking ground musically? Yeah, yeah. And I remember, Do they have their own sound. And, and the discussion thing. in the office with you guys were, look at machinery. They're doing it. You know, they're not trying wow. to sound like that. that That's great. Yeah. So, so you guys were a respected, a respected band. That's you know? fantastic. Because for me, I was a noob there in the office. I just started working there. I didn't like go for an interview. Yeah, yeah. I just walk in there and go like, I work you now. You know. Yeah, yeah. So, so I like, <laughs> I, I just kept quiet and started listening and trying to learn a lot. Yeah, of what they were saying, and you Must guys were great were, to were, work there. Yeah, like. it was fucking amazing. But coming back to your album, okay. So now I'm starting to listen to that album, and I'm like, okay, fuck, okay. Storm Thorgerson, the guy who did all the artwork for Pink Floyd, did yeah. your cover. How did that work? Yeah, that's crazy. Tell me it? that story. I still like it's crazy. That story is through. That basically came about because the manager that we had at that time, her name's Carrie Friedman. Yeah, she, her mother was like a really good friend of Storm Thorgerson. And she uh, she was meeting up with Storm because he was flying to Cape Town. They were shooting something like for Pink Floyd down no. here. He was coming to do, I don't know, some artwork or something in Cape Town. So Kerry was like, you know, why don't we just send him your music and, and just ask him, like, if he might, if he digs it, if he wants to no. maybe do artwork or something for it and he really dug the music and he actually came to a gig like he had a crutch and everything and his his friend like brought him to mercury he came to watch us play at mercury that is <laughs> so out there he was quite and he was he was he was quite old as well yeah um because he, he actually he was cool sh dude. shortly after that he died yeah i know it was like two years after that yeah. album came out yeah. yeah um so, so yeah, he was a really cool dude. He was pretty funny. Um, and then you guys met up and, and you guys brainstormed and discussed what you guys wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. He asked, he, he asked me. I remember he said to me, what, what, he said, what do you, he said, do you have any like specific things you want? Like, like if I, if I use a photo of you, do you, do you want me to not use a photo of you or can I do something else? And I was just like, fucking stop dogs and do whatever the fuck you want, man. I don't care. <laughs> like just, I, I trust your, I trust yeah. your instincts. <laughs> <laughs> and then he came up with like, oh, it's so stunning. That cover is so it's beautiful. So beautiful man. with the, it's, with it's, the it's, lady. It's the lady. The machine it, lady. Yeah, the machine lady. She's, uh, for people who haven't seen the cover, go and Google it, obviously. But it's the, it's it's a lady like um, crouching on, like on a rock, on a rock. It's yeah, super surreal. And and she's she's body painted with like um, like like the cogs, cogs, and, and, cogs and, and the machine. Yeah, because and the, the inside of the CD is really beautiful as well. Because yeah. if you take out the sleeve, it's got like more variations of that same photograph but it's like different variations of it yeah it's really really beautiful because the other day i was a, a, a i'm a very big pink floyd fan so i would go usually i would go look for new stuff on youtube like unreleased stuff of pink floyd yeah and there's a whole thing about storm thorgerson and on how he just walked in during the sessions while they're recording dark side of the moon and he gave them like all these options and he didn't like the prison thing really. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He had that on the side yeah, yeah. and like, and <laughs> unanim unanimously all four members just went that one, that I want, we want that one, wow. you know, and wow, after iconic. remastering the, the, the album for like 5.1 stereo, they had a, 
they obviously adapted the artwork, so you had to adapt the artwork again, you know, really? with, with like with a, with a different prism. Uh, with slightly different prism. S- yeah, slightly <laughs> different one. And yeah, then yeah. And he would walk in with all the options and the band would go with that one. They always knew and, and that always amazed him, you know. So I was wondering, did you guys ever like fanboy out on him or like ask him questions about we, those days? We didn't get to like really hang out with him too much. I mean, we, we saw him at the gig and we had our first initial meeting with him, which was like at a house he was staying at in like Bantry Bay or, or Clifton or something. So so long ago now. Um, and then he, we also saw him because he, sh- he, sh- he, he had us photograph. He didn't do the no. photograph, but he came with and we went to like Deer Park. Yeah. And he and he put us, and that's the picture um, on the back of the album. Yeah. It's this really like psychedelic, like looks like you've taken like a bag of mushrooms or something. It's like all like strange colors, and we're just all, like standing by this tree, and that was that. Those were the three times that we that we met him. So I didn't get like time to have long, long, in depth conversations with him. But he was very, very cool. He was really like he had a great sense of humor. He was quite yeah. like had this quite dry sense of humor. And um, did you have to pay him? No. He did it for free? I think he did it for like a small fee, which the label, our record label covered. Just But music. I can tell you it was not no. It was not that much money. It wasn't like Pink Floyd money. It was like some thousands, but not oh. like that many. Wow. Oh. <laughs> that is so amazing. And it's you, fucking it, crazy. And you can sit here and tell that story now. That's just Stuff like that just yeah. amazes me, you know. Yeah. Did, you, did you ever use it's that? Like, yeah. Did you ever use that uh, for the press release? The fact that, I mean, was that like a hook of, uh, that a lot of people asked you about it, that those it, days? It was, always, it was always included, like, in the information. And I always include it. Like, if I mention machinery, I always include that because it's, it's such it's, it's such a – I'm, I'm honored. Like, I'm honored yeah. by it. And I, th- I think it's, it's such a big – Part, because machinery is not going on, it's such a beautiful part of machinery, you know, like, um, but it's quite funny because a lot of people don't, I, I think a lot of people don't know who he is and don't realize, oh. but then you see the people who do and they'll be like, oh my gosh. Yeah, so like, I'm spending like 10 like, minutes like on you, this Like right you, like you know. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's really cool for the, when you get the people who actually are like, whoa, that's, yeah. I don't think people sometimes know, like, they don't like get it, like that prism is the same fucking dude he it's did. It's the same dude. I mean, and Led he, Zeppelin 1, 2, and 3, that's the same yeah, fucking the, dude. I remember when they told us he's going to, and I was like, okay, it's Muse. Storm Thorgerson. I started like Muse Googling covers, him. You know? Yeah. yeah. Wolf Mother. Wolf Mother. Yeah. That is amazing. Audio Slave. I mean, now, you, you, and you guys have one album. And the, it's, yeah, it's, we don't need like it's, 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 it's perfect. Almost, it's perfect. It's perfect. Like it's yeah. beautiful the way the way it's kind of like yeah, it's like a it's like a museum piece. Yeah, yeah. That's machinery is almost like this little like artifact. But you know, w- with machinery, also you guys became a festival band. So so you started yeah. performing in all those fucking big stages. Yeah, that and was I remember that was so much fun. And so and that, in that Rolling Stone time, 2011, 12, 13, I saw you guys perform at so many festivals, and it was like, okay, cool, machinery is going to come up now. It's a thing, you oh, know. We had some great great gigs, and you had amazing shows. So yeah. so. And, and fuck, how many fucking cool songs? I made some notes in some of those songs. I mean, like Machine I Am, Big Bad Machine, Machinery, Cogs in the Machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And th- there's a lot of things about like like snakes. Like on the new album, there's a song called Vibra Snake. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. And and the, the title from the album, My Soul Got Stranger. Yeah, the title yeah. isn't that thing. Totally, totally. So serpents, and then the, the previous album, like your solo first solo album, is uh, yeah, I like Serpente the thread machine. I like to thread everything almost as a story, like it's a continuing story. What, it's what, a theme, what, you know. What's the thing about the machine? Uh, the machine was to do with like machinery, big bad machine, wh- like m- machine. I don't know what I, it was. It's very much to do with that cyclical thing, like no. of things just working. And it was also to do with like I had this kind of interest in the idea of the working class as well, and the blues, and that uh, that being sort of a. Uh, like like the like like music that comes from the working class um if that makes any sense and the working class who work with machines and who are like laborers so it was all that kind of like that was conceptually for me where my head was at and then it was also oh. that what the sound of those machines was this cyclical da, 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 you know this thing because that repeats you know a lot, and me a lot and of your riffs layered the two guitars had these weirds like a machine it was like that it was to do with that it was like there's these concepts that were linked to the music and because if you think about big mad machines dun, 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 yeah no, 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 no. And, it, and it goes around. Yeah, it it's goes totally. Around. It's like, yeah, it's like the and, same the whole and, time. And, and like, the, the break doesn't really come when you expect it to come. You no. know, and it goes around. It's it's very interesting. Because yeah. conceptually, 
that's I think a lot of people make albums and make music because they like they ha- happen to stumble upon songs. Yeah. And I think uh, where an album gets fucking awesome is yeah, like yeah. when they work with it. Like take sorry for coming back to Dark Side of the Moon, but yeah. that's a concept album. Yeah. Because it's it's about time, money. And uh, 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 like alienation, yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, 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 almost death or being no. alone. Yeah, yeah, you know th- 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 those four concepts. And if you think about a totally. band, like mortality, mortality, yeah, and like 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 modern angst, you know. And and coming Quite back to real. machinery, the thing is, it's conceptual. Yeah, it for is. You, for you explaining it, it to me now, it makes sense to me. Why why was this music so cool to me? And then the artwork and the song titles and everything comes together, you know. Yeah, it's true. I've not even actually thought of it in that, but yeah, it's definitely. It's and the, snakes, okay, serpents. The snakes, snakes, the snakes, the snakes come from like the snakes are a conti- Okay, so Andre used to like Andre like loves snakes. He's like obsessed with snakes. So the snakes were already like very much like part of the world of the music, like through Andre through machinery. And from from my side with snakes, I love. I love snakes because I see them as a sim- well. There's multiple symbols, but for me, the snake is a very much a symbol of kind of the re- the 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 thwarted woman, the rebellious woman, like the woman. You know, it's always that that kind of very Christian biblical thing yeah. of like the woman and the snake. You know, so I, it's I, I love I love the. I love the. It for me, it symbolizes kind of the the rebellion of women, and yeah. uh, it's also and then the snake in itself is um it's like it's like kind of with women it's like insult of women are you know the, you know evil or weaker and stuff and that's kind of Im, Im, embodied in that relationship he has so it's kind of like an embracing of that like yeah the fucking snake and the woman <laughs> it's like i don't know if i'm explaining it probably but yeah. um and then just in it, the other the snake is for me is such an amazing it's such amazing symbolism in terms of like it's symbols like transformation and power and um fear like um and and s- strength like it's a very uh it's a powerful symbol like yeah. like uh sort of re like like rebirth almost like continuation like, like yeah okay and what, what about like if you if you see i don't know if you've been following uh the sort of african music for the past year or two but you've seen the folk of blisigar cover with the uh, with the uh, robberous uruburos, like the snake eating its own tail. Oh yes, 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 yes. Exactly. That's yeah. that's what I'm trying to explain. Actually, that's exactly yeah. what that that that's about. That uh, that symbol. Yeah. It's where it, like it's I can't. I'm, I'm like I'm lost for the words now. It's like the continuation of life, like rebirth, retransformation. The snake symbolizes that. It like symbolizes everything. Like. Okay, so, but, but listen, uh, working creatively with someone like Andre, was that this, the first person where you guys? Because I've never, ever, me being a musician, like, wrote with a guy or a, with a girl, like, a song. I, I just never no? got that, um, like, that opportunity or that, I never got that uh, that click or that spark. Yeah, yeah. So, was under the first guy or person that, that you happened to do that with? Or did it happen no. in, your, in your previous bands? Well, what what happens, the way I work usually is I, I write this, I'll write the song with the lyrics and the rhythm guitar. So, yeah. it'll already be, like pretty much a fully formed song on its own and I, that's how i've always worked and then i'll take it to the the melodies to yeah. either a lead violinist or a lead guitarist or what you know whatever have you and i've had those i had those sparks with with other musicians that i played with in my other bands like with galena for example mm who is the most unbelievable violinist. She's, uh, you know, she was studying classical violin at UCT when I met her. Um, she's now studying like production at Goldsmiths in London. Wow. Um, so she does a lot of composition. She's done an opera. She's got, she's, she's, she plays a bit of bass as well, but she's got one of the most incredible creative musical minds. She's like a dream to, to play with. Oh. So, she was definitely one of the first people where I kind of like, I would write the song and it would be like, but then they would play on it and just be like, whoa, you've just taken it to like another place, you know? Yeah. And then that definitely continued with Andre because he's such a fantastic uh, guitarist, you know, yeah. and would bring all these amazing layers to everything. And you guys had a very sim- a similar kind of playing style. Well, r- kind of riffy. I yeah. mean, 
I think I learned a lot of stuff from Andre, like watching him play and 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 learn and learning like about how powerful refs can be and like what kind of stuff you can do, you know, as a guitarist. Yeah, because he has such a cool style. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, I haven't seen him. I think he played with Tail Swapper after Machinery. Yeah, but, but I haven't really seen him perform after Machinery. Yeah, I um, he's a bit of an enigma. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't know him that well, you know, but but I've hanged with him and parted with him a I few th- times. And he's, he was a very very cool dude. I think you know? he's still in Cormicky. You can probably go find him. <laughs> is in it? Is he still modeling? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> probably, I don't know. So you guys, you guys, you don't keep in touch. <laughs> not not no, not really, not too much. Um. So what was the what we'll, was the we'll end be connected of, forever though. <laughs> is it? But were you were you guys go, a boyfriend and girlfriend? Um. Yeah, we dated. We dated mm. as well for a while. It's diff- difficult being in a band and dating someone. Yeah, I, d- I don't think it's ideal. No. I think there are only, like, uh, some people Some people can make it work. Um, like Gene Carter and Johnny Cash. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, um, and that's that's the only uh, yeah, that, uh, uh, one I can think of. Now. Yeah, it's, 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 um, I don't think it's advisable. Mm, mm. But, but, but it's tempting. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know. Because, because, fuck. Imagine, I mean, maybe you would know how that feels, but I, I can't imagine connecting with someone because I always say having a band making your band, it's like having a buddy 2.0. Yeah. Not just are you buddies and yeah, best yeah. friends, yeah, yeah. but you connect musically. That's like a, that's like a friendship with a, with a big added bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now imagine being romantically involved with someone and jelling well with music and having the, the best time. Yeah, it can yeah, be, yeah. it can be the most perfect thing and then it can also, because a relationship can fuck out like that, you know. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they so, do. Uh, because they do. <laughs> and, and and the weird thing was, I had this conversation with Andre and with, with Lucy because they were uh, like two years ago. They were, they were uh, promoting the the Medicine Boy album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of the obvious questions is, okay, you guys are together, but you're not together again yeah. because a lot of the songs are you guys in conversation with each other, and they were, they, <laughs> yeah. they were very uncomfortable talking about it. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and I don't want to put them on the spot. It's just like I listened very closely to that album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just couldn't ignore the elephant in the room. And I, and I remember the stairs going, because if there was a camera, people would see the stairs yeah, going yeah. left and right, you know? <laughs> so, um, so s- s- without being too presumptuous, yeah. like the, what, the, the end of machinery, why did, why, did the band br- the, why did the band break up? Was it because of that or not? Well, I think, um, yeah, I think that definitely, that definitely had something to do with it. I think, I think, um, I think if you look at where I've ended up going i think i was kind of gonna go solo in the end anyway no. um because i am solo now and it's it fits it suits me like um in this at this point you know i, no. I enjoyed playing in bands when i when i was playing in the bands so yeah i don't know these things these things happen you know i just I, I don't, you want to work with people in a certain context you know and if you mm. can't it's a sacred space and if you can't keep that place like you know, not no one's no one's fault or anything, but if it just can't be that way, then it just can't continue anymore. Like, no. so you know, things changed, and the whole way, the whole way it it worked for the, for some part of the time, it just it changed, and you know, I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't do it anymore. No, unfortunately. But was was it? Uh, because <laughs> at least we at least we have this fucking album, you know. So that's the thing. That's that's so I I you know. It's it's okay because there's that beautiful album and that that captures okay, the the best I think of both of us um, and that's there forever and and it's so it's so cool and I'm so proud of it and I'm so happy that it's part of my discography oh. it's part of my work and I can still play some of those songs now you know because uh, yesterday I was watching uh, I I geek out on the internet sometimes and I would watch uh, like rig rundowns I don't know if you watch that it's where Premier Guitar they would go and talk to like Tom Morello or whoever, and, oh, yeah, and he yeah. would explain his like this is the two guitars I use on yeah, stage, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever. And uh, he gear made, talk, yeah, gear talk, <laughs> and he, he made a very cool point when playing solo and performing with a band like yeah, Audio yeah. Slave or like Rage Against the Machine. He said if you if you're part of a band, there's a there's a kind of chemistry, and you guys come together, and yeah, that's yeah. why that band exists. He says being a solo artist. Uh, uh, that chemistry is not there because you're more of a visionary now. 
Yeah. So yeah. you've got this idea of a song or a concept of a song, yeah, yeah. and and you're the main driving force behind that song, mm-hmm. and then you get people to play on it. You know. Yeah. 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 Trying to craft that that. That, that chemistry. Yeah, yeah. So for you, coming from mach- machinery, which had chemistry, and being solo, yeah, and where you have to, where, where you have to write the song and basically produce it with your collaborators, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was that process for you? Um, you mean before? No, no, no. To now? No, no, like, like, like doing the, uh, uh, it's Serpente machi- Machine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, w- well, like the, the, like the going solo part yeah. kind of thing. Um, it was really scary to go solo. It was like, it was a very, it was a big change. Um, obviously, like, uh, the thing is, like, from the beginning, though, the one thing that's always stayed with me from beginning to end when I started music is I've always written my own song. So I've always mm. written my own vocals and my own structures and my own rhythm. So I've always been, like, functional, like, on my own. But I always loved to play with other people yeah. and have, have a band. So... It's weird being solo because I, on the one hand, like I miss, I miss that feeling of someone else being in it with me completely. Yeah. Like, and, and it can be a little bit lonely in a way sometimes, but it, it's like everything, you know, it has pros and cons. On the other hand, I don't miss having to, you know, think about someone else or like, yeah. you know, take into consideration someone else's vision yeah, which might not vision. be where i want to go and then having to have kind of like sort of uncomfortable you know so so they're kind of they're sort of pros and cons to it um and then what i what i what i what i i mean i can't really i can't really imagine being in a band now because now i'm so used to being i think i was always a solo artist like at heart from the beginning <laughs> no. but um it just took a while to actually go solo, um, and yeah, Serp- Serpent Machine was 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 this big change from being in bands the whole time, and the uh, the other huge change of Serpent Machine was suddenly being a lead guitarist, yeah, and that was like fucking scary because. Yeah, that was so intense because suddenly I was playing in a three piece and there was no like okay solo now it was like no, you have to do it now I've got to do it and people are like waiting like <laughs> what you know, what are you doing like and. I remember some of the first gigs. I mean, for it took it took a while to it took a long time for me to get to, and I'm still like you know I'm always learning, and I'm never I'm never like where I am. You know, I'll never be where I I'll never be the best. I'm always trying to get better and yeah. better and better. There's always ways to improve. There's always things that you're not as good at that you can be better at. You know what I mean? But at that stage, like just playing a solo was. You know, I could do it alone in my room, I guess, when I was recording, but to actually have to do it in front of an audience with an amp, like a stack amp, yeah. that's really fucking loud. And like, if you make a mistake, it's so loud. It, it, the mistake is amplified. Yeah, dude. It's like, it, it was, it was, it was really intense. And I actually was, I was, I was genuinely quite scared. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. And I you, don't know if and, I'm going to handle this. And you play a strat. And the thing is, if you play, if you play a solo on like a single, if you, if, if you, if you lead guitar on a, on a single quill pickup, it's much more naked than with with a humbucker yeah. like, like on the guild. Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. You, you can get away with some stuff, you know, yeah. because it's a little bit more of a muddy sound. But, but but because that's why I can't play a strat because I'm I'm a fucking messy guitarist. But my other strat, my black strat, has a humbu- has a humbucker on it. Really? Yeah, it's got two, so it's oh, okay. that's why it's so lovely. It's oh, it's got okay. a bit of a bassier, warmer kind of feel to it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it took. It was a long. It, that was a long long time i don't know how long that probably took probably a year or two to get used to actually trying to play the solos and stuff and just getting that confidence took a long time and it took a lot of mistakes yeah. playing at gigs and you know but i but I, I i got i got through it eventually but but it's weird that that you took s- like it's such still- a long r- road going solo because you were born with a solo artist name sunny fox <laughs> that's that's like that's yeah. like being born up with a superhero name, yeah, you know, yeah. like the name Sunny Fox. It's so fucking badass and South African. You yeah, know? my par- Yeah, is it my, I've got my parents to thank for that, man. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, here, here we are. I made, I made it. You, you, you're, not, you're not like uh, Karen Potgieter. You had to go, you had to get a new name. You were born with a fucking solo name. <laughs> yeah, <know>? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sunny <coughs> fucking Fox. That's awesome. Okay, but um, explain to me uh, when you guys did Machinery, who produced that album? 
We actually produced it. We, 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 it. we produced it with Paris Sanos. Ah, okay. So there wasn't really a producer. It was just me, Andre, and Paris, like, chilling in the studio going, like, turn the, turn the bass up on the kick, <laughs> you know, or, like, put more reverb on, like, you know. That's it's, production. It's like, yeah, it sounds cool. Like, that's fine. Yeah, get it, send it to the mastering engineer. Yeah, exactly. And with Make the, it loud. And with the uh, uh, Serpent Machine, who produced that album? That's Matthew Fink. And that's the guy from Just Music. Yeah. And he produced... Taylor, Nakane Tore. Yeah, yeah, he's, um, he's amazing. Hotels. He's fantastic. Yeah, he, he done some amazing He's almost work. like a band member for me. Yeah. You know. So, you, so, so uh, how was that working with a guy like that in the studio? Ama- amazing, amazing. Matthew, Matthew was, I think Matthew, Matthew came on board yeah, just after Machinery came into Just Music. And he actually did a remix of Big Bad Machine. That's the one that went to radio. That was yeah. actually Matthew Fink's remix. He added like all this percussion onto it, made it sound really like fat and like really, really cool. Um, and that was like how we got introduced to Matthew before we even met him. They were just like, this is Matthew's remix and stuff. And yeah, then, 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 then he was put forward, you know, to be like, do you want this guy, you know, to produce your, your, your album? And that first album, it was, you know, it was us getting to know each other because we'd never worked together before. So um, I'm quite like paranoid, you know, when I work with other people because I've been doing this for quite a long time now and you can have like, you know, bad experiences and, you know, if you don't share the same vision, it can become quite difficult to work no. creatively with people. Um, so that's why with Machinery, we didn't, we didn't want to get a producer because we didn't want to have someone who were telling us how to do it, you yeah. know, when we didn't, didn't agree. Um, so we wanted to just control it rather. So that was kind of a, a big, a, a big step for me to be like, I'm going to hand over. I'm scared to do this, but I'm going to hand over you, control taking, and, and trust yeah. hopefully in this decision. Taking a shot in someone now. Yeah. And, um, Matthew's great. He's like a fellow Scorpio. He's got like a huge, um, huge palette of music that he absolutely loves. He's a musician. Yeah. Um, He's he's a very very nice person and I I love working with him. Um, we we don't really we kind of agree pretty much on everything. Like I love his ideas, mm. um, and that's it was real it was real joy to work with him on the second album because by the second album I knew this now hundred yeah. percent and I knew him and I was like I couldn't wait to do that album with him because there was no like getting to know you and I'm not sure we were like totally like okay cool what do we because you know. I, I could hear a lot of the machinery because obviously you were the creative force in that band yeah. but I, I can I can hear some uh, some machinery influenced songs on on the on the 2015 album uh, Serpent Machine yeah it, you can and then yeah we, Killer like Killer was a yes. machinery song okay yeah yeah, yeah. because the, it's still at that that bl- that that uh, it, it's like a hypnotic kind of still that circular thing. That's like thing. Andre's riff. That yeah. dum da 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 dum da da. Yeah. Yes, and and but but it but it's still like bluesy soaked, you know. Yeah. But uh, but hypnotic, yeah. you know. And yeah. you, you got that Ali Fakatori guitaring going yeah. still. Yeah. And then on your latest album that came out last year, uh, 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 I got Stranger. Yeah. Such a fucking cool title. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's such a cool title, and I, and I I read an article where you said it's a it's a a Kerak. Uh, yeah, quote. it's from uh, on the road. It's, yeah. it's like a little like paragraph in on the road. And uh, and now I can hear. Okay, you like left like machinery and serpent machine. That it, it felt like that's behind you now. Yeah, really. On, okay, cool. On, on the new album because it the, is very different because of the brass sections and the string sections. And I was like, wow, this is like it. it, it the transition felt it felt to me like. Uh, remember that Black Keys album El Camino? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. When it got so full, everything got full. Wait, wait. And then they did Turn Blue. Now, oh, uh, that, yeah. that transition, it felt similar with your album when I, yeah. while I was listening to it because uh, the tempos were half time now. Yeah, it's so. a totally, it's very different, this one. Be- be- because you're, uh, because. You you very tempo driven and on yeah. the on on the new album the latest one I was like fuck all the stuff went half time there's yeah, sections chill. and it's and, and, chill. and, and, and brass chill. and stuff and there's more like folk Celtic things going so yeah. obviously you were yeah. listening to other stuff and and I mean the the, the, diff, the they call it the difficult second album yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. To, 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 am I making the right <laughs> conclusions here well no I mean everyone's entitled you're entitled yeah. to your opinion I mean, it depends because if you you know if you're someone who's listened to the other stuff and then you're like totally into that rock sound and yeah. that you know that vibe then this album is going to be different then completely because it's not 
it's not obviously it still has elements of that because it's still me so but i can't make um i can't make 10 albums that all sound the same oh. i'm not that kind of artist that's boring to me like i have to, i can't make another like machinery and serpent machine album with just riffs going around yeah. and round and round like i have to i have to change it up um and for me it's not it's not like a adding on this new stuff it's for me it's it's just it's going back to music that i've always loved i've yeah. always listened to bob dylan i've always listened to um etta james and sam cook and soul sam and cook's awesome i've always written ballads as well yeah. and, and a lot of the music a lot of the songs that i wrote with um mama know nothing and with black betty before machinery that people don't know because there's no album were like this so you know people think that that's kind of my identity because mm. they've 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 heard these two albums but you know, there were there were there was all this other music like years before those albums. You know, I didn't only start making music then. Um, so for me, it's it's very honest because it's it's completely you know it's not adding. It's just stuff that's been within me my whole life. It's like the same. I've always played piano. I've always you know loved you know like I have like I also really wanted to sing on this album yeah. like I, I have I, like first and foremost I think like I'm a singer you know it's my my, my voice is my yeah, that's the thing we've, we've, my big I'm like typical nerd boy going on about the guitar but you're actually fucking you're real vocalist yeah first and, yeah you well know? you see maybe because because of the other two albums it's so guitar but first and foremost I yeah. think I'm a vocalist like I'm a singer you know and a lot of that with the with the rock stuff which I I fucking love it but I wanted to do an album where I'm actually like really singing, you know, like singing softer, like singing more lyrical, like working with harmonies. Like I love, um, yeah, I love like a lot of, you know, I wanted to pull all those other genres in and pull a softer palette mm. in, you know, I didn't, I, I, I wanted to. There's a lot to, of soul on there as well. Yeah, I love soul and I love the vocals of soul and I, I, I wanted to have an album that was, that was that was more gentle and a bit more chilled and more spacey and that's what I've done. No. And I'm I'm su I'm very proud of it. I, I, I love it and I, I'm really like I'm really stoked to add it to to the other ones as part of my body of work. Yeah, but you know? yeah, so while you were making this album I made some I made some fucking crazy notes always, you know, and we can talk some about some of the songs yeah. like I'm a shunting train, you know. That song um reminded me of machinery but but it always but 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 the lyrics felt like you're going through changes because shunting i've got an album called shunt you know like my yeah, first yeah. and only english album william <laughs> welfare it's called shunt you know cool. because I, I, I was shunting from afrikaans to fucking english you know that was the thing so ah, that's you know cool. you know okay, like yeah, shunt you yeah, know yeah, and yeah. I, I had my dog on the cover because he's an english bulldog so because you know, i'm afrikaans ah, so english bulldog cool. like on a that. train station because like i'm I'm doing this train Very, thing now. You yeah, know? I'm yeah. going to Cape Town from Belleville every Concept day. Concept album. Concept way, album. Man. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> so, so I was listening to this song with obviously with my own fucking projecting my own things on it, but but I'm a shunting train, you know, like uh, that felt be because the album sounds so much different than your previous stuff. I, I felt that that song was like testament to that, you know. What, what, what was that was my own experience. But tell me, the, tell me your story about that song. So, so that that song I actually wrote when I was nineteen. Mm. I wrote that song. You see, like I wrote that song for like Black Benny. Like it was that time. Um, so and it's, I, t I I do that sometimes. It's just like Big Bad Machine. With that one, I'm a train. Big Bad Machine, I'm a machine. Um, are there any other ones that I'm doing that? It's like a personification thing. Um, so it's a bit like Big Bad Machine, actually, in that way. Yeah. Now I'm a now I'm a train. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a shunting train. I don't know. I, I I wrote that when I was 19. Those I wrote those words when I was 19. So that's just me. That was my love, probably for Johnny Hooker and just blues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chicka yeah. puffy, chicka puffy, fucking yeah. awesome. Like, so, and, and some something like Vibra Snake, because the 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 the, the, the title, the album title, comes from that song. Yeah. So it's not like you call one song uh, "My Soul Got Stranger." Yeah, it, it's uh, that's in a song. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So what, what's this, what, did the title jump out of that song, or did you put the title in that song? How did that work? That what happened actually with that is that um, the we didn't want to name the album "Vibra Snake" uh, because oh wait no. 
We didn't want to name it. We didn't want to call the song My Soul Got Stranger, which was the name originally for that song, because it's one of the most unconventional, uncommercial songs on the well, album. It is so out there. It's, it's, it's yeah. the, the structure is fucking from the moon. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't want to name the album that because then what people tend to do is when they Google an album, they'll go straight to that song. So yeah. for commercial purposes, I guess, like the idea was let's not name the most super weird song the name of that title because then everyone's going to go to that Makes song and sense. all the sheep will be like, oh, this is not catchy. What is this? Like, yeah, you yeah. Know? So we... So I changed... They, they were like, let's change the name of the song. And I was like, okay, that's a cool idea. And... I listened to the song and we used a vibra snap. I think it's called a vibra snap or something. Yeah. It's, it's like a percussive instrument. What's it called? Vibra. It's called a vibra something. Vibra slap. It's yeah. called a vibra slap. And it makes that yeah. sound like a rattlesnake. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, let's call it vibra snake. Fuck, that's cool. There's, a, there's a, a breakdown in that song that reminds me of a reggae song. Like, dun, 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 dun. Oh, that's Bob Marley. That's... Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know. I know. Actually, what you, I don't know what the song, but I. Da, da, it, it's not a copy of that, but da, 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 da. but but it reminds me of because you, you've got such fucking cool breakdowns in the songs, you know. Yeah, where, it's fun uh, to play live. That's yeah, all. They're like like unexpected breakdowns, and that song like it sprung out to me because obviously of the title of the album, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then um, Willow's song is this, this very angelic kind of yeah, like, yeah. like a Celtic vibe going, you know. It's it, Shakespeare. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's um. That's Shakespeare. That's that's uh, it's the song, it's the song Desdemona sings um, before she dies in Othello. And I actually played Desdemona at UCT in the final year play. So I was very intimate with that character and that play. And I had to sing that song. Like um, so, years later, I was like, I want to do like a modern version of it. It'll be really fun I think like and I want to do that more in my next album I think I'm starting to think about my next album now slowly just mulling on ideas and directions like I could maybe go you know um because I like that idea of taking poems that other people have written or pieces of a play mm. or you know it's someone else's stuff um a, a prayer even and yeah. taking that and then putting it to music I really enjoy doing that I think it's because I studied theater it's a little bit like interpreting you know yeah so it's like a collage almost. You yeah, know? Like exactly. putting something in a new context. Exactly. I like That's that cool. idea. And and the weird thing is that when you listen to that song, it, 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 it I got the feeling of, fuck, there's something old and mystical here. Yeah, and like I, Elizabethan. And I, yeah, and I tell me that. <laughs> like very <and> old. <laughs> I love it when, when I listen to podcasts about songs and then I go and listen to the songs again and then I... Yeah, because of that little bit of that little bit of pretext, you know, you you've got a different experience with the song. So, yeah. and then obviously you can see me projecting all this other personal stuff on music. Yeah, that's the isn't that the fun, that's the amazing part of it though, isn't it? Music. That's what's so great music about music. Shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> it's the best. It's the best. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> okay, then uh, gl um, a glorious wonder. That's like a soul crooning, smooth sailing. That's like yeah. a, that's a fucking smooth <laughs> it's song. It's so not rocky. <laughs> yeah, but but it's cool. <coughs> What's the story of that song? That one I wrote. That I also wrote that. Like I wrote, I wrote that when I went solo. I don't know. I just wrote that. I actually wrote that almost as like a reggae song initially, and then it just ended up being. It went through different sort of. I often go through different um, arrangements. Mm. Like the song sort of. It'll be the same song, but I'll change the structures and the arrangements and. I don't know, but um, I don't know. I just, I, 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 it's just one of the songs that I wrote. That's the one that I wrote. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna go through every song with you now, but but tell me, uh, why did you move from South Africa to London? Because it was in the time while while you you were dropping this album and then you moved. Yeah, actually, I actually couldn't have a proper launch here because I was. Then we missed the date for the 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 production of the vinyl or the. I think the CDs actually was just a little bit later, and then I had to fly. Um, I've gone to London because I've been playing, you know, in 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 South Africa for fifteen years, and I really want to travel a bit more, and I find it difficult, like. I find it a bit difficult to travel being based in Cape Town. It's very far away. Um, I went to London to, to, for a little tour four years ago. And um, it, I, I just I, I felt like you, you, you kind of have to be based here to like even get into a scene yeah. or get into anything. It's very difficult to just like pop in. Yeah. Um, 
So I I, I want to be kind of based there for for a little while and try and you know just it. I want to play to different audiences and stuff. You know, there's a whole world out there. You know, which 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 I don't think I'm being exposed to. I'm no. staying in Cape Town all the time. You know, and I love Cape Town. If I if I if I was able to have like a jet, you know, and I could just come in and out, you know, when I wanted to, then I would totally do that. But for me that's not really possible so i kind of have to be based in europe for a little while i'm just gonna i'm just gonna see how it goes you know and uh, and taking a new album to i mean without those audiences having the context of machinery and yeah. your previous album taking an album over there like uh, what was your expectations and what what happened in london with the new album um well i mean it, it, i've just been I mean, I don't have like a label over there. I don't have an agent over there. So I've just been basically setting up a band there and setting up gigs um, and playing. I, I'm not even playing only the latest album. When I play there, I play like a mix of everything. Yeah. I'm playing like a mix of machinery because it's already seven, eight months since this album's been released. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, it's it's a really, really big concentrated city i mean it's there are th like thousands of venues it's huge so it's just um a matter of you know going out there and spreading the music like yeah. gig by gig um grassroots kind know, of approach yeah pretty much like yeah. for now i guess um i don't know it's, and, uh, it's, and, and it's very it's 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 exciting and it's very stimulating like and and uh how, how do people perceive you there? Like when you play live, do you, do do you give them some context? Like, okay, you were here in London when you were ten years yeah. old, and you went to South Africa, and now you're back with an album. Like, uh, because obviously that that can add to the music. So yeah, how, yeah. How do you approach it when you do play gigs there? Well, it's a, I don't. I'm, I've never been like I'm not a massive talker on stage. Like, mm. but I. Well, obviously, you do interviews and press and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then obviously, like I explained it. Um, I explained that I've come from South Africa. Um, I, 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 I basically, I like to give a little bit of background sometimes for songs, you know, of where I've written them and the context and stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah. And uh, um, coming back now, do you just come to visit to? Visit parents or family and friends, and they're now you're doing some gigs as well. Yeah, yeah. I came, I came back because there are a number of reasons. I mean, I came back. I want to come and probably pick up some gear. <laughs> 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 um, my 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 pro tools and all my recording stuff is yeah. here. So if I'm gonna if I start to write my next album, I definitely want my pro tools, you know, on hand. And my, my, my beautiful keyboard is here as I've come back to, to get my keyboard and I've come back to play a couple shows, which is really, really cool. Um, and obviously I'm like, I'm, I'm quite close with my parents. I miss my, my mom and dad. So yeah. I've come to say hello to them and stuff, but yeah. So, so but are you going to go back to London again? Yeah, I'm going back and, um, I'm here for three weeks yeah. and then I'm, and then I'm back. I'm going to plug the gigs in the beginning of the episode so we don't have to do that now. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Because wh wh why? <laughs> Just why? <laughs> but talking about keys, like while you were talking about the keys, there's one song on the album, I think it's the last song, One Man. What? What is the keys? What's the synth? What, what, what's that two instruments at the end, like the last song? Oh, uh, that's like a, that's an organ. It's like a, it's like an overdriven organ yeah. on One Man. And, uh, it's just a super hectic, like flangey, phasey guitar as well on the end. It sounds so badass. I was like, "What the? F oh, I have to ask you, what the fuck is that?" But we actually, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of samples I did at home when I was no. writing the album, which we took on hard drive up to up to up to Joburg, and yeah. that we've we've put in there. So there are like all these other layers because I was using like sometimes the keyboard with these weird sounds, and then putting overdrive on the keyboard, and then flanging the keyboard as well. And then Matthew would also do more weird shit to it, and then we'd end up with. You know, and you print. Let's print that yeah. sample. Yeah. yeah, 
We enjoy that. We enjoy that with some with with some of the stuff. I don't know, man. It's like like a lot of different kinds but the of thing music. Is, you know? uh, what, what I find out from you now, the record is, players, so many samples and layers and stuff. Like like chatting to you, I realize that you you're very hands on musician. You're not yeah. like you you sit and write your song at home with a guitar and then you go to studio and all the stuff happens there. It's like your writing process is being very hands on, recording, mm-hmm. layering since you were 19. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You got that. You I know? just kind of expect people to know that. But I guess, but, but they don't, do they? They don't, no. 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 Also, like, I, I, I think, uh, you know, sometimes people have said to me, we see your, you're like in Criminal, my last video, they're like, we can see your playing guitar but I mean are you are you really playing that guitar we weren't really sure if you were miming or like <laughs> so I guess yeah people don't always know you know yeah. and the thing is you, you you expect people to know a lot of yeah. stuff about you and then uh, my, one of my favorite quotes is, <laughs> quotes is from David uh, David Foster Wallace has said that you would you would worry much less about what people think of you when you realize they don't think about you that often. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's, it's a sinister yeah. quote, but for it, myself as well, because yeah. I talk so much cuck about myself on the, <laughs> on the, on the podcast show. You this expect everyone to know. To know that. I'm like, well, I put it out there on the internet, so fuck, you should everyone, know. Yeah, you know? yeah. Me too. I guess I go, well, I said it in all those interviews, all yeah. those years, like everyone must know this. Like, Because Sunny, but there, there's some stuff of you on like NPR and you, you, you got, I read some of the articles and interviews and stuff that you did, didn't London and there's some cool press coming out with the album yeah. and, with, and with yeah yeah you there's are. been lovely there's been lovely stuff so so you so obviously uh, the, the the album is doing well yeah I mean it's 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 so like it's 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 doing well but I mean it's like it's so big there you know like yeah. I'm not a commercial artist so it's really cool like when people come to the gigs and then they they come and find you afterwards online yeah. and I've been going to the post office there and I've been like posting CDs to people that's, in like Wales do, yeah. and people in London it's so cute they like mail me and they're like hey no, I'm in Wales like can you can I get a CD you know from you and then I go and I post it to them yeah um so you know it, it yeah, it's 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 different, man. It's fucking different from here. Like, yeah. and it's it's very exciting. Like, um, but there isn't that like there isn't that thing that I have here where people know me and I have this yeah. history here and and like you know there's this level of respect for all these years that I've worked here and all these festivals yeah. I have played. You know, when I come on when I go on a stage there, I come on like it's like cold. Like no one's ever seen me before. They don't know who the fuck I am. Like, so. It's like it's like both terrifying and very very um, exciting for me, and it's what I it's 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 good. I think it's good because it, it's a challenge, you know. And you've yeah. got to like you've got to bring your bring your shit, you know. No, yeah, but the thing is, there's no laziness. Like for for me, being a guy who took a lot of pictures of a lot of bands uh, in 2011, 12, and 13, I I saw you guys a lot, and I was like, fuck, you always fucking bring it. Like one of my well, now most- now I really have to bring it. Like <laughs> even more bring it. Like no, it's yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. like you have to prove. You have to prove like. You have to gig. prove, yeah. You have to prove that you have, you are the shit. You know, you you've got the goods. Like, but one of it's, my, it's, what, it's crazy. One of your memorable per- per- performances that I remember of you, were, you did a collaboration with Inga Beckman at Up the ah. Creek. That was just like, dude. Yeah, oh those God, gigs were so like, fun. This is like these these two amazing artists from two different musical backgrounds, and you guys were yeah, spectacular together. Yeah, amazing though. Oh, oh talk I, about chemistry on stage yeah, with other people. Fuck. Yeah, I love performing with Inga. She's amazing. Oh, do you do you guys still keep touch? Definitely, we yeah. definitely keep in touch. We go for walks on the mountain every now and then. Really? Yeah. Oh fuck, that's awesome. Yeah, no, Inga's Inga's fuck, fantastic. You guys do an album together. That would be very cool. Yeah, that would, that would be actually awesome. be awesome. Yeah. Maybe we will actually. Well, you know, I'm the guy. There's still time. <laughs> <laughs> there's still time. There's still time for more albums. You know. Okay, listen, uh, uh, Sunny. Do you think we covered it all? I think we covered a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's cool. Huh? We did it one yeah. hour thirty. Spoke. Really? Is that is that wow? That's amazing. And yeah, you ask great questions. You just keep it rolling, which is yeah. which is amazing. That's you ask really good. You ask great questions. Thank you. That's why I won an award. I know. <laughs> Let's not let's not brag now. <laughs> no, I have to because this is my first one for the year. I've been slacking. I know. So I'm only as so good awesome. as my last gig. You know? <laughs> <coughs> 
<laughs> no, because now you've always got that, so you're always good, you know. First fucking size. I've got a fucking award. Okay, wait, before before we go, let me see if I'm, I I always check through my notes. Like, let me see. Okay. I love it. I love it. I also keep lots of lists. I love lists. keeping lists. Okay. My mother gave me a, a little a little present, and it's like this yeah. notepad, and it says, "Keep calm." Yeah. And make a list. You keep calm. Make a list. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many lists. I love lists. <laughs> Okay, let me just see. Okay, I love what I love the most is ticking things off on the list. Okay, so uh, coming back to your mom and your dad because you came to visit them as well. Yeah. What what do they think about your music? Last question. Like, uh, uh, what's the notes or, or, or what happens on their faces when you play them a mix for the first time? You know, what do they think about you as a musician? Oh, they they're very. I'm very. They're very supportive, man. My parents are amazing. My parents, they're completely supportive. They they they're great. They um. It's it's great having them because they might, I mean they love music so much so they're not coming from a context where they kind of don't understand music they really really understand yeah. music and they they um, my dad plays like mean guitar he plays mean boogie boogie blues guitar he's Fuck, great cool. he loves Johnny Hooker and um, Ali Fakatura as well he just sits and like you know you know, jams a lot often in his room and stuff have um, you guys jammed together before we play, we played a little bit together before I want to get him on stage uh, with me like for for some gigs um he 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 he's he's great um and my mom my mom they they're very cool they they're obviously like very supportive so they're obviously going to be like biased yeah but they are also like they're not like totally like 100% always like this is this is perfect like you're amazing like they will say sometimes like you know I don't really get this song. I don't. I don't. I don't really. I don't think this is one of your best. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 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 I think that's. I think that's good. And then I'm just like, well, you don't understand. <laughs> you know. So yeah, it's 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 great. It's great. Wait, I mean, They're for, very supportive, you know. Especially the last album because it was a big departure. Like when you played that f- to them because of this they'll thing. they'll get the last album a lot because I yeah. think they love. I think they. They very, so they know me as a vocalist as well. Yeah. Like they, 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 they firmly like believe in the voice, you know, and the power of of the voice yes. of singers and the voice, the power of the singer. So that this album was such a vocal album. I think they really, they they would have really liked that. I think the heavier, the kind of like very heavy rocky stuff. Mm. Like they they're not like totally as into that, you know. Yeah, because it's almost like uh, the the guitar maybe overshadows that beautiful voice exactly. that, that yeah. they gave you. It is, it is. They, yeah. I think they prefer to have you know, but they're not like you know, and they also they they they, they like they like a good they like a good song, mm. you know. Oh, but that's awesome. But it's, it, everyone has their different tastes, and that's the beauty, you know. Everyone's you know, yeah. I don't like everything someone makes, and they don't like everything you know I make, and that's that's the beauty of subjectivity, you know, and having our own opinions, you know. Yeah. Listen, uh, Sunny, thank you for coming in. It was a big pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was so much fun. Thank you. Daai keer dit. A baie spuf gesprek met Sunny Fox. Ek hoop jy dit geniet. Ek het weer bykie Brits gepraat. Hoe my Engels was een bykie raast te maak, skiem ek het ookie gedoen. Ek is baie meer gemakkelijk in Afrikaans. Dank jy die ingetune in die week. En jy moet sublief veilig rui hierdie naweek. En as jy nou lus is om een nieuwe t-shirt te gaan bestel, jy weet, gaan nou na williamwelfer.com toe, of as jy een Blitzkrieg braaikaster stainless steel gitaar rooster wil bestel, dan stuur jy vir my e-mail by williamwelfer.gmail.com en uh, kom ek hoop ek het veel episode volgende week, want ek wil weer hard aan die podcast raak, maar soms laat die universe nie toe nie, en dan moet ek die universe fight. En ek hoef nie te fight nie, maar ek kan soms het my fucking man staan en vir jou nog een episode bou. Anyway, Ramblings of a fucking madman in Belleville. Oor en uit, sien veel volgende week, tot ziens.